inshallah uh, gas transport after few days in next week so what is gas exchange what is the primary function of the respiratory system gas main function primary function gas exchange to provide oxygen to the tissues to the cells and to carry out the byproduct of metabolism that is the major byproduct is carbon dioxide away from the cells outside the body so that is gas exchange for this we have to know certain basic things first okay so what is that describe the physical properties of gaseous exchange list the factors that determine the rate of diffusion across the alveolo capillary membrane physical principles means basically we are concerned with diffusion over here as you know there are many forms of uh, transport isn't it but when we are talking about gas transport we are talking only about diffusion because that is the primary way in which gases will move from here to there then let us see the ventilation perfusion ratio let us define it okay and describe its effect on gas exchange also explain the various different changes in ventilation perfusion ratio uh, i mean changes in ventilation or perfusion which will be affecting this particular ratio the ventilation perfusion okay what is diffusion which kind of transport without any carrier without producing energy yes yes so as you know there are various types of transport mechanisms going on in the body some are active transport some are yes. passive transport diffusion is one of the passive transport mechanisms isn't it how do you define it or how does it occur for example how does diffusion occur by the kinetic energy of the molecules themselves okay by the kinetic energy of the molecules themselves that means for example in a space if a gas is present that gas the molecules of that gas will be constantly moving in all directions constantly moving in all directions like in this particular picture you can see there are molecules on this side a side and molecules on the b side okay these two arrows they indicate the movement of the gas gas is moving from a to b as well as from b to a at the same time is that clear yes now what we have to see for is the net diffusion so diffusion is occurring from here to here and here to here but what is net diffusion total or final or resultant you can say okay what is the final outcome so net diffusion is occurring from where to where from a to b why why net diffusion will be occurring in one direction which direction from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure from an area of higher concentration to a area of lower concentration as you can see there are less gas molecules on the b side as compared to the a side correct yes and hence you can see the bigger arrow from a to b and the smaller arrow from b to a so don't be confused why this arrow is there the smaller arrow the smaller arrow only tells you that diffusion is occurring in both the directions but net diffusion or more to put it simply more diffusion will be occurring from area of higher pressure higher concentration to lower okay so net diffusion of gas in one direction we were talking about one gas now what if there are many gases present inside that particular tube like the air which we are breathing this air is not only oxygen it is having nitrogen it is having oxygen it is also having carbon dioxide and various other gases so if there is a mixture of gases and for example we say this is 100 this mixture is 100 out of which 70 is nitrogen i am giving you an example i am not giving the correct figures only to explain the partial pressure 20 is oxygen and 10 is carbon dioxide correct percentages 
the total is coming to 100. Now, what is the contribution of oxygen in this 100? Okay. In other words, the pressure exerted by one particular gas in a mixture of gases is called as the partial pressure. Now, why partial? Partial is a word coming from part, isn't it? Part of. Part of means partial. Okay? So, in a mixture of gases, the part or I can say the pressure which is exerted by oxygen is called as the partial pressure of oxygen out of the total 100. 20 is the pressure of oxygen. Let us see the correct figures. So you understand partial pressure? Yes. The total pressure of a gas will be say for example 100 out of which what is the pressure exerted by oxygen or nitrogen or any other gas? That particular pressure is called as the partial pressure of that gas. Easy to understand, easy to remember. Partial pressure denoted by capital letter P, partial pressure. And if it is, if we are talking about partial pressure of oxygen, O2 will be attached to it. So PO2. So whenever you read PO2, as actual meaning is partial pressure of oxygen. PCO2, partial pressure of carbon dioxide. PN2, partial pressure of nitrogen. <coughs> Air, which we are breathing, is 79% nitrogen. 79% nitrogen. And 21% oxygen. Okay? Which we are breathing, which we are inspiring, which we are taking in. 79 and 21. The total pressure of this mixture, this 79 and 21 making 100, the total pressure of this mixture at sea level averages 760 millimeters of mercury, which is the atmospheric pressure, you know, 760 millimeter mercury is called as the atmospheric pressure. So now it is very easy, 79 percent of 760 and 21 percent of 760, isn't it? Yes. Because out of this 760 millimeters of mercury, which is the pressure, 79% is nitrogen, so 79% of 760 is 600 and 21% of 760 is 160. So PO2 is 160 at sea level in the atmosphere. In the atmosphere, at sea level, PO2, what is PO2? Partial, Partial pressure of oxygen. What is it? 160. Nitrogen is 600. Total making 760. Is it clear? Attention of oxygen. Hmm? Attention of oxygen. Attention? I don't know. Oxygen tension. Yeah, attention. Oxygen tension. The same as uh, oxygen. Yes, we can see. Okay? Shall I continue? The rest is clear. The rest is description of partial pressure. How about total temperature? What do you call that? Which one? 760 is the atmospheric pressure. So, one physical property we have considered that was diffusion. Another is solubility. Solubility means, of course, there has to be a fluid for something to be soluble in, isn't it? So, solubility brings us to a solute and a solvent, if I can put it like that, isn't it? It brings us to a gas and a fluid. So, always, you know, uh, air and fluid gas interface is there. Particularly with reference to our lungs. As you know, there is the role of surfactant over there. Why? Because there is an air fluid interface. Interface, yani? They are coming together. Where are they coming together? In the alveoli. So, what happens over there? When the air comes in contact with the fluid lining the alveoli, what happens? Why? Why collapse? But it doesn't collapse. So we'll come to that. Why it doesn't? So it will collapse. Why it will collapse? Because of pressure. Loudly. Because of 
Because of? This is losing the surfactant. Losing the surfactant. Attention, the pressure. Okay. What is it? Attention, the pressure. Attention? Surface tension. Surface tension. Yeah. Huh? Surface tension. Yeah. Surface tension. What is surface tension? What is surface tension? When the air comes to the upper line, it's because tension is what is surface tension? <laughs> surface. You know surface? <coughs> surface of water. The uppermost water. layer. Water. Okay. Tension. Yani, uh, attraction. Increased attraction between the water molecules. <coughs> which water molecules? Those water molecules which are on the surface of the water. Why do they are more in tension? Why are they more attracted towards one another? Whenever there is air present. This air, these air molecules, they cause the molecules on the surface of the water to become highly attracted to one another, thereby increasing the surface tension. Now, if surface tension is more, and you know the alveoli is round, so it is like this, the fluid is like this, and air comes in, so there is increased surface tension inside. If there is increased surface tension, this surface tension will, because the molecules, they are attracting one another, so attracting one another means it will try it to collapse. In other words, there will be a huge resistance to inspiration. In other words, this is respiratory distress, isn't it? The person is unable to inspire air because there is huge resistance to air flow. Because of the presence of surfactant, what does the surfactant do? It reduces the surface tension. Surfactant is a surface tension reducing agent. Anyway. So, solubility. Whenever air and water come in contact with another, for example, let us take this. Here, at the beginning, there is no PO2, there is no oxygen molecule inside the water. Isn't it? And here the PO2 is 100. Can you see that? What about the next step after some time? Oxygen will dissolve inside the fluid. Depending upon the solubility of, we are discussing the solubility now. So, Oxygen is dissolving inside. Now it will keep on dissolving till what time? Till equilibrium reaches. Till there is, what do you mean by equilibrium? Pressure the same. Yeah, equilibrium means sameness, whether it is pressure or anything, isn't it? So here the PO2 is 100 above, as you know, the partial pressure is 100. Equilibrium means the PO2 inside will also be 100. Clear? Yes. That is equilibrium. But if you see over here it is 5.2, oxygen is 5.2 m moles, whereas here oxygen is 0.15 m mole. So the question is PO2 is the same in the air and in the water. PO2 is the same. Partial pressure of oxygen is the same. What is partial pressure? It is the pressure exerted by the gas. Right? So it is the same here and here. That is why they are at equilibrium. But the solubility of oxygen, look at the solubility. It is, or the, in other words, it is the concentration. So it is 5.2 m mole per liter in the air, whereas in the fluid, it is 0.15. Let us compare this with that of carbon dioxide. This is carbon dioxide. At the same partial pressure, PCO200, PCO200. PCO200 in the fluid, PO200 in the fluid. Clear? Partial pressure for, for we are keeping it here. We are keeping oxygen and carbon dioxide at the same partial pressures, here and here. So equilibrium will be reached, partial pressure inside will be the same. Partial pressure here will be the same. Clear? Yes. For PO2 and PCO2. But the difference is in the concentration. Look at Look at it here. 5.2, 5.2. Okay. Uh, so, in carbon dioxide, high is soluble. Yes, that is what we are coming to. But look inside the water. Here it is 5.2. Here it is 5.2. Same in the air. But here it is 0.15 oxygen, whereas carbon dioxide is 3. What does this prove? This this tells you about 
solubility of a gas solubility means the extent to which a gas will dissolve in a fluid some gases will dissolve more some gases will dissolve less according to what according to their solubility coefficient clear the solubility coefficient of the gas and this solubility coefficient of the gas is called as henry's law whose law henry's law and what is that again it is very simple the partial pressure equals concentration of the dissolved gas divided by the solubility coefficient of the gas and here it gives you okay a, a comparative phenomenon next thing we have to consider about the air that we are inspiring is its humidification what is humidification what is humidity in qasim in al jawf the humidity in the atmosphere is very less almost like 0% or 1% or 5% but if you go to dammam or jadda the humidity in the air is almost 90 to 95% now do you understand what humidity is humidity means water vapor presence in the air presence of what what concentration what percentage is the water vapor that is present have you experienced that in jadda or the map and the difference between yes. qasim and and, and uh, jadda for example huge difference in qasim it is 0% and there it is 95 i mean you have to you keep on sweating 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 in jadda and the map why because of, of the humidity fact similarly humidification inside the air one of the functions of the nose you must have studied is humidifying the inspired air what do you mean by humidifying the inspired air the inspired air is many a times it is dry it will damage the respiratory tract the dry air so it has to be humidified so water vapor actually is added in it while it is passing through our nasal structures isn't it hence water vapor pressure the water vapor pressure at 0 degrees is 5 and kida at uh, it is 760 okay but the most important value to remember is at our body temperature what is the water pressure at body temperature it is 47 mm of mercury now when we are talking about diffusion of gases in our body primarily it is passing through the respiratory membrane isn't it so we have to know the factors that affect the the diffusion diffusion of gases through fluids pressure difference causes the net diffusion we already know this pressure difference causes net diffusion in the first slide we have seen that now let us see the pressure difference and several other factors that affect the rate of gas diffusion in the fluid so one thing we already know what is one is what is the one factor that affects gas diffusion pressure difference if there is no pressure difference there will be no net diffusion will there be diffusion yes yes diffusion will be there don't be confused about this if there is no pressure difference diffusion will still be there but there will not be any net diffusion so that you have to understand between diffusion and net diffusion <coughs> okay number one factors that affect diffusion number one solubility of the gas like we have seen just now isn't it Yeah. More the gas is soluble, more will be its diffusion. Correct? Yeah. Very easy to understand now. Number two, cross-sectional area of the fluid. Like we have seen just now, there is a fluid and there is air. Now, if what do you mean by cross-sectional area? The the area that is available or, or the surface you can say the surface area or the cross-sectional area of the fluid. If the area is less. less will be the diffusion if the area is more more gas is available more the area is available for the gas to diffuse through so more the cross sectional area more will be the diffusion what about the distance obviously another point is the gas is here the fluid is here and the gas has to go all the way then it has to diffuse into the into the fluid and the gas is here and the fluid is here so the distance through which the gas has to travel if it is less so less the distance again better will be the diffusion correct yes yeah. 
molecular weight of the gas. What about molecular weight of the gas? How will it affect? Yes. Lower the molecular weight, more will be the diffusion. What about temperature of the fluid? More the temperature of the fluid, more will be the diffusion. Why again? Like, like you must have, uh, you must be knowing from your school days, the experiment in which you put salt in a beaker uh, containing water, put salt in it and then mix it. Then keep on mixing salt. After some time, the salt will not mix. It will not dissolve. Yet. It will not dissolve. Then what do you do? Then you keep it on a flame, on a Bunsen burner. When you heat it and stir it, then the salt will be gone. It will be dissolved. Why? Correct. Because of heating, when, the, when anything is heated, the molecules of that particular thing, whether it is solid or liquid, they will be away from one another. That way they create space, more space, and the salt is now dissolved in it. Correct? Do you remember that experiment? So, more the temperature, more will be the, uh, the diffusion. Okay? The relative co diffusion coefficients, like you have already seen, the, the important thing to remember is oxygen is one, for example, diffusion, and carbon dioxide is, look at the solubility. So can we make a statement and say that carbon solubility of carbon dioxide is 20 times more than that of oxygen? Can we say that? Yes. Solubility of is 20 times more more than that of oxygen. Okay. Now let us come to our uh, the thing that we are. So those were the physical characteristics. Okay. Diffusion. Okay, the solubility of the gas, concentration, etc., etc. Factors affecting diffusion. Now, the respiratory uh, area itself. This is called as the respiratory tube, as you must be knowing. Isn't it? This is the terminal bronchial, this is the respiratory bronchial. Then the respiratory bronchial breaks up into alveolar duct. The alveolar duct breaks up into alveolar, alveolar sacs, also called as the atrium also called as the atria or the alveolar sac, from where the, finally the alveoli they arise. So this is the, this is the actual part where the respiration is occurring. Correct? <coughs> Am I correct? Yes. Or respiration is occurring only in the alveoli? Uh, from the respiratory bronchial. Yes, from the respiratory bronchial. That is why it is called as the respiratory bronchial. Because over here also, gas exchange will occur. Okay? Okay. Now, this particular respiratory lobule, is composed of uh, respiratory bronchiole as we can see, alveolar duct, atria and alveolar. Okay? This is called as the respiratory, from here, this is called as the respiratory lobule. There are about 300 million alveoli in the two lungs. That is almost roughly 150 million here, 150 million on the left side. And each alveolus, one alveolus, okay, has an average diameter of about 0.2 millimeter. Okay. Now this shows you the real picture of the alveoli and this is the picture written, uh, drawn by an uh, artist. Now what do you see? This is one alveolus, this is another, correct? Yes. This is third, these are the alveoli collectively. One is called as the alveolus. Then what do you see here? The, you can say the interalveolar membrane, the membrane or the, or the septum which is present between the alveoli, is that it? And over here you can see a specific area where you will see the vein artery and the lymphatic drainage, lymphatic vessel. Now if you see, if you take this cross section of this particular membrane, this is this is the way you can see it, any vertical section. So on this side this is the alveolus, this is the alveolus, see here? And on this side this is the blood capillary, pulmonary capillary. Correct? Yes. Okay? And this is the membrane through which diffusion has to take place. Now, you can remember the layers of the membrane from the capillary side to the alveolar side or from the alveolar side to the capillary side. Either way. Okay? How many layers? How many layers? Five. If we include this particular space, then it becomes six. 
otherwise five. Okay. So let's start from the right side. Jameen, what is this? Capillary endothelium. It is very easy to remember. You have to remember two things: the capillary and the alveolar. So the capillary will have its endothelium, a layer number one. Then the capillary will have its basement membrane, layer number two. Third, third is the space, the interstitial space between the. Then, then what will come? The basement membrane of the alveolar. Then the epithelium of the alveolar. Isn't it? Am I right? <coughs> See here. This is the interstitial space. This is the capillary endothelium. This is the capillary basement membrane. This is the interstitial space. This is the basement membrane, and this is the alveolar epithelium. And finally, finally, what is there? Innermost layer. Just we discussed about the surface tension. The fluid lining, not the surfactant. Surfactant is present inside the fluid. So it is the layer of fluid lining the alveolar. Very easy to remember. Yeah. Easy or not? Yes. Yeah. Okay, from right side. Will you mean capillary endothelium, capillary basement membrane? It has the endothelium has to have a basement membrane. Then interstitial space. Then because we are moving from right to left, so there will be a basement membrane of the alveolar. Then the alveolar epithelium, right? And then the fluid lining the alveolar. Five six layers. Masbud? Yes. These are the six layers of the respiratory membrane. Okay? okay. Now let us say, let us see factors that will affect diffusion through the respiratory membrane. Again, if you understand the respiratory membrane and its thickness and its layers, it is very easy to you can yourself say the factors that will affect rate of diffusion, rate of movement of gases, transport of gases across the respiratory membrane. Isn't it? Yes. How? See here. The thickness of the membrane, the more thick the membrane, less will be the diffusion. So thickness will affect rate of diffusion. Very easy. Surface area of the membrane, more the surface area, yani more area is available for the gas to diffuse. So more will be the diffusion. Less the surface area. Like for example, can you give me an example of reduction of surface area of the respiratory membrane? Increase that the emphysema. Emphysema, is that? Are you having a PBL on that? No, but you you had something. You had some some study on that, is that it? Emphysema. What happens in emphysema? The respiratory membrane surface area is reduced. Why? Because the alveoli they are coalescing. Coalescing means the entire alveolar walls they break down and maybe say ten alveoli become one alveoli, is that it? That is what happens in emphysema. Correct? Am I correct? So the surface area is reducing. Less the surface area, less the diffusion. More the surface area, more the diffusion. Then what? What will affect the diffusion? The diffusion coefficient of the gas itself. So two factors for the membrane. One factor for the gas. Rate of diffusion. Meaning diffusion coefficient of the gas. More the diffusion coefficient of a gas, more will be the diffusion. Less the diffusion coefficient, less will be the diffusion. Partial pressure of the gas. Isn't it? Partial pressure, partial pressure which is there in the alveoli, partial pressure which is there in the capillary blood. PO2 here and PO2 here. As we have seen in that particular picture, the air and the fluid and the solubility of the gases. So here it is useful. Air present in the alveoli, fluid, yani the blood in the capillary. So PO2 here, PO2 here. So it may come to equilibrium, maybe PO2 hundred, PO2 hundred. But depending upon the solubility coefficient. Like you remember, yeah. oxygen is less, carbon dioxide is more, isn't it? That we will see in gas transport in the le next lecture. So two factors for the membrane, two factors for the yes. gas. So it will be coefficient or diffusion coefficient of the gas and partial pressure of the gas. Surface area of the membrane and thickness of the membrane. Four factors. Sahel, <laughs> Jitla. Now, Ventilation perfusion ratio. We are talking about exchange of gases, which is which is very 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 important, isn't it? Uh, I hope it is very important that you are looking in your in your phones. More important than understanding, uh, isn't it? 
what I am trying so much to teach you. Anyway, so the ventilation perfusion ratio. Many problems are occurring because of respiratory. Uh, I mean, uh, because of habit of people. Like for example, smoking. Isn't it? What will the smoke do to the alveoli? Have you seen uh, a picture of the smoker's lung and a normal lung? Yes. Yeah. What 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 does it do? The smoke. The smoke is how much how much heated? What is the temperature of the tip of the so the cigarette? What is the temperature? That glowing tip. What is the temperature? 80 degrees or more? 80. 80. Tamadine or or the other. Yeah. Isn't it? Because it is red glowing. It is uh, like a hot amber. Amber, isn't it? So that particular smoke you are pulling in, and it is going in inside inside the lungs. Okay, the respiratory system tries its best to reduce the temperature of that particular smoke, but still it cannot. I mean, it, it is going directly into the lungs. Keep on doing that, and the alveolar walls they will break down. So you are giving less surface area. So all these factors, remember, each time you take in the smoke, remember these factors, okay? <laughs> anyway, because of because of uh, our habits, etc., or because of pollution and so many things, or because of diseases, or because of accidents, etc., there, there may be conditions in which the person may be having respiratory distress, okay? Respiratory distress. So, sometimes <coughs> what happens is, even if, there is no obvious problem in the patient, but still any obvious problem in his respiration, obvious problem in his uh, overall state, any, let us call it as total res respiration, there is no problem, but still he will be having respiratory distress. So to help us, help us any doctors evaluate this particular condition in which obviously you don't see anything wrong in his respiratory rate or the overall total respiration, but why is uh, he having still respiratory distress? So a concept has been evolved, a concept has been put forward, and that concept is called as the ventilation perfusion ratio, or concept of ventilation perfusion ratio. As you know, two things are very important for proper exchange of gases, two things. One is ventilation itself, and another is perfusion. I hope you know the meaning of these two terms. Yes. What is the meaning of uh, ventilation? CO2. <coughs> no, only, forget about the respiratory system, just ventilation, what it means. If I say this room is very well ventilated or this room is not ventilated at all. Very rich in the You are talking about concentration of gas, rich in O2 and this, this thing. Ventilation basically means movement of air in and out of a space. Okay, continuous movement of air. Ventilation means, okay, continuous movement of air in and out of a space, any space. It can be a room, it can be an alveoli. That is ventilation, remember. So movement, okay. So movement means what? Air will come in and go out. That means you take inspiration, so the alveoli is, is filling up with air. And then you are giving out, so it is, it is, it is moving out again. But the whole air, all of it doesn't move out of your respiratory system. Does it move out no. with your uh, expiration? No. Does all of the air move out? No. 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 Like in spirometry, uh, you must be remembering from there, there is something called as residual volume. Is that it? Even after you try your maximum to throw out all the air, to expire all the air, you cannot. Still, res uh, reserve volume will be there, residual volume will be there. Is that it? Not the reserve volume. Resi residual volume. Correct? So, what I am trying to tell you is, the air is coming in and, and going out, but some air remains in the alveoli. Then in the next inspiration, again air is coming in and going out, okay? So in this way, the air in the alveoli is replaced, correct? Another word for replaced is replenished, that is better, yeah. replenished. That is something which is, like for example, you are having one liter of, say, for example, milk, and you take out to 250 milli. Then you put 250 milli again inside. So now you are replenishing, okay, the 750 to 1. So replenish means re give it back, okay, make it full again. So that is ventilation. And perfusion is simple. Perfusion means 
blood the flow. blood flow through any tissue or the quantity of blood that is flowing through any tissue at a given moment of time is called as perfusion correct so both these two things are very important for gas transport there should be adequate perfusion there should be adequate <coughs> ventilation both the things should be there normally now forget about it. you can read it yourself right is the same thing which i am going to explain so now normally uh, when we are doing normal quiet respiration do you think that the whole of our lungs from the apex to the base are being well ventilated and are being well perfused yeah. obviously not obviously not because nature has arranged it so that so that there is a lot of reserve also like for example the demands for your oxygen and the demand for removal of carbon dioxide will increase if you start exercising correct yes so where is this additional oxygen and things are coming from because of over activity or because of the recruitment of different areas of the lungs which are not usually uh, being used so let me ask you a question very easy in the apical regions you know apical regions of the lungs yes what about ventilation there are apical regions there are middle uh, regions and there are lower. lower or basal regions of the of the lungs can you tell me about ventilation normally in normal quiet breathing like you are doing now you are sitting i am also normal quiet slightly more than you maybe because i am gir gir kathir so <coughs> what about ventilation in the apical region so you have an idea yani yeah. yeah. that means ventilation will not be the same throughout the lungs from apex to base some areas will be uh, very well ventilated some areas will be poorly ventilated correct yes, okay let us go to perfusion similarly for perfusion perfusion means the uh, heart is pumping the blood into the pulmonary system so through the pulmonary system the blood is coming into the lungs correct yes now what happens what happens is blood going everywhere yani in the in the gas exchange areas we are talking about gas exchange area there are non gas exchange areas also where the blood will go isn't it the blood has to supply the bronchial tree the lung parenchyma everywhere all the tissues but those are non exchange areas so what do you think about perfusion the same some areas will be very well perfused some areas will be poorly perfused in the gas exchange area correct now there may be areas these two things are clear now there may be areas in which the ventilation is good but the perfusion is poor yes do you understand my point yes there may be certain areas in the lungs where ventilation is good no. but perfusion is poor will proper gas exchange occur no no conversely speaking there may be areas where perfusion is good but ventilation is poor again here also the gas exchange will not be proper correct is this clear to you that is the ventilation perfusion ratio basically okay so like i have told you some areas of the lungs are well ventilated but no perfusion some areas of the lung are well perfused blood flow is proper but there is no ventilation okay so in either of these conditions gas exchange through the respiratory membrane is seriously impaired isn't it it will be affected there is improper gas exchange and the person may suffer severe respiratory dis uh, distress despite despite any in spite of in spite of both normal normal total ventilation and normal total pulmonary blood so the overall like i told you in the beginning overall you can say his ventilation is good his perfusion is also good because the heart is also working properly and there are no obvious uh, problems in the uh, blood vessels but still this guy is having respiratory distress so that is the reason okay what is the reason the ventilation and blood flow are going to different parts of the lung 
like like different parts means like I have told you just now. Area is well well ventilated, but the blood is not going there, so it is poorly perfused. Or area is well perfused but poorly ventilated. So the oxygen and the carbon dioxide exchange is not occurring properly. So let us define this. The quantitative concept developed to help us understand respiratory exchange when there is imbalance between alveolar ventilation and alveolar blood flow is called as the ventilation perfusion ratio. This is the ventilation perfusion ratio. VA by Q. Please remember this. VA by Q over Q. So what does this A indicate? Alveolar. V indicates ventilation. A indicates alveolar ventilation. Q indicates perfusion. V A by Q or V by Q ventilation perfusion ratio. Okay. V ventilation simple. Q perfusion. Why Q? Why not P? Because P usually is used for pressure. P O2. So it will lead to a lot of confusions when we use it in different places. So Q V A by Q. Over here you see V A by Q ratio is zero. Over here you see V A by Q is normal. And over here you see VA by Q is, what is this sign? Infinity. Let us explain this. When VA by Q equals 0. When will it equal 0? Now you know, there is a numerator, yani above number and a below number, which is called as a denominator. So this will be equal to 0. When, when will it be equal to 0? Simple mathematics. Simple mathematics. Yes? That is without any alveolar ventilation. So the number above is is zero. If anything, zero divided by anything is zero. Okay. So without any alveolar ventilation, remember V by Q. Then you understand this. So V is above, Q is below perfusion, and the, we get the ratio to that. So without any alveolar ventilation, the air in the alveoli, remember the figure of the alveoli and the capillary. There is the alveolus, the air in the alveolus, but there is no ventilation in the alveolus. So what will happen to the air in the alveolus? It will become equal to the, or the PO2 here will become equal to the PO2 in the, in the capillary. And what is the PO2 in the capillary? It is deoxygenated blood. Correct? Yes. In, the, in the capillary, there is deoxygenated blood. So, the lower PO2 will be equalized in the alveoli. Simple to understand? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Very simple. Why? Because there is no ventilation. So, if the air in the alveoli comes to equilibrium with blood, oxygen and carbon dioxide, because there is no ventilation here. Because these gases diffuse between the So venous blood PO2 will be 40. Why? Because venous blood is 40. Okay? And PCO2 of 45 will be 40. So the same uh, PO2 in the alveoli where there is no ventilation. The PO2 will be 40 and PCO2 will be 45. Okay? Therefore, these are also the normal partial pressures of these two gases in the alveoli that have blood flow but no ventilation. Okay? Understood? When VA by Q equals 0, when VA by Q equals infinity, the other part, the other aspect, acts opposite. What? There is no capillary blood flow. So again remember the picture, the alveoli and the capillary. Ventilation is there but perfusion is not there. Okay? It's not like there is no blood flow, but yani, for purposes of understanding, it is very reduced, okay? Very reduced through the pulmonary uh, respiratory membrane. Very low perfusion, or sometimes maybe no perfusion at all. Okay? So what will happen? Anything divided by zero is infinity. Mathematics. Anything, any number divided by zero is infinity. So that is why there was infinity. So infinity will be when? Yes, there is, Q is 0. 
Yes. So there is no capillary blood flow to carry oxygen away, even though the ventilation is proper to bring carbon dioxide to the. Therefore, instead of the alveolar gases coming to the equilibrium with the venous blood, alveolar air becomes equal to humidified inspired air. So the PO2 will be 149 and PCO2 will be zero. So why? Because there is no no uh, carbon dioxide coming. Understood? Yes. Normally also in our lungs right now there will be some areas where VA by Q will be infinity and some areas where VA by Q will be will be zero. 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 Normally also remember right now why? Because we are not using the full capacities of our lungs for ventilation and perfume. Okay? okay. They will of course increase so much in disease conditions. And when VA by Q is normal, now if you understand infinity and zero, it is this is the normal thing here. Yes. Normal perfusion, normal yes. ventilation. Yes. So this, this is what is I mean, you can say keeping a saline, isn't it? Normal ventilation for you, right? So normal ventilation, normal capillary blood flow, exchange of oxygen, carbon dioxide is nearly optimal. Optimal yani? Best. Alveolar PO2 will be 104, PCO2 is 40. Physiologic shunt. Now, you understand you have understood uh, VA by Q is zero and VA by Q is infinity. Okay? So when VA by Q is infinity or, or there are in between spaces, okay? If if VA by Q is below normal. Not exactly zero, but below normal. What will happen? There is inadequate ventilation. Yeah. Below normal means yes. Yes. towards zero. Yes. So it is there is inadequate ventilation to provide oxygen needed to fully oxygenate the blood flowing through the alveolar capillaries. Now the alveolus is there, ventilation <coughs> is there, and the perfusion is there. But in the alveolus, the ventilation is there, but it is not normal. It is less. So if the ventilation is less, the oxygen that is present will not completely oxygenate the blood in the capillaries. Will not completely. For example, 10 milli blood is coming in the capillaries. Okay? If normal ventilation is there, the whole of 10 milli will be oxygenated. Understood so far? Yes. yes. If less oxygen or less ventilation is there, Maybe 8 milli will be oxygenated, 2 milli will remain deoxygenated. Clear? Clear. Clear so far? Therefore, a certain fraction, <coughs> like 2 milli, like I am using this for example only, 10 milli and 2 milli. So, a certain fraction of the venous blood passing through the pulmonary capillaries does not become oxygenated. This fraction, this 2 milli, yeah. is called as shunted blood. Basically, shunt means to bypass. Basically, shunting. Okay? This is the main track, but you go from here to here. You are shunting this particular region. This is called as shunting. Okay? So, even there are surgical procedures which are shunting the, the, the blood flow. Like cardiac bypass. Anyway. <coughs> so, this is called as shunted blood. Do you understand what is shunted blood? That particular fraction, that particular part of the blood, which is coming which from the, which is coming from the pulmonary side to the heart, but which is deoxygenated, okay? That is called as shunted. You understand one because of the less ventilation. Now also, like I have told you, blood is coming into the pulmonary system. Most of it goes to the respiratory gas exchange areas, but some blood goes where. To the tissues itself, the lung tissues, the bronchi, the cells, the parenchyma, they have to be supplied to keep them alive, isn't it? They will, uh, they will be supplied and deoxygenated blood will come back from them and mix in the pulmonary blood. Correct? Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Therefore, this deoxygenated or this blood too is unoxygenated, shunted blood, isn't it? It is also shunted because it is not going to the gas exchange areas. The total amount, the total quantity 
of shunted blood per minute is called the physiological shunt. So what is physiological shunt? The quantity of blood. Okay? Or quantity of you can say deoxygenated blood. Okay? Which is returning to the heart. Okay? That, that small uh, quantity is called as the physiological shunt. This brings us to the last slide and the concept of physiological dead space. Now, in our respiratory system, there are gas exchange areas and there are non-gas exchange areas. Like for example, the trachea. Like you have said, up to the terminal bronchiole. After the terminal bronchiole starts the respiratory bronchiole, here respiratory exchange occurs. So all those areas, physiology is function, right? So, physiological dead space, very easy to understand, will be that space where there is no gas exchange. Right? Like for example, when Va by Q is zero, or Va by Q is infinity. So, here the gas is there, the respiratory membrane is there, but gas exchange is not occurring. So, what is physiological difference between anatomical and physiological dead space? Anatomical dead space is simple, Aratul. What is it? Gas is present in those areas where there is no respiratory membrane. So no gas exchange can occur, like the trachea for example. Clear? Yeah. But physiological dead space is gas is, is, is uh, or those areas where respiratory membrane is there, gas is there, but exchange is not. Clear? Yes. That means Physiological dead space will include anatomical dead space also. Okay? See here. When ventilation of some of the alveoli is great, ventilation is good. Yeah. But alveolar blood flow is low. VO by Q, VA by Q is equal to infinity, towards infinity. Okay? Yeah. There is far more available oxygen in the alveoli then can be transported away by the flowing blood because the blood is less. So more oxygen is available. Thus, the ventilation of this alveoli is said to be wasted. This is wasted ventilation. Any physiological dead space you have to keep in mind the phenomena of ventilation. Well ventilated, okay, but there is not enough blood to carry away the oxygen. So if the blood is not there proper, so the function, overall function is not met. The needs, the requirements, they are not fulfilled. Okay? That is why it is called as wasting. Okay? It is said to be wasted. The ventilation of the anatomical dead space areas, areas of the respiratory passageways is also wasted. That is also wasted because no, no respiratory membrane is there. So, the sum of these two types of wasted ventilation is called the physiological dead space. So, which is greater, anatomical dead space or physiological dead space in terms of volume? Physiological dead space is slightly greater because it includes anatomical dead space. Okay? Yes. Any questions? Thank you.